Lights are out. Lineup is good. First of six. A main events coming green. Stuck on wing. Feature events underway. Driller season begins into turn number one. Carroll down into the corner. Looking awfully solid after his monster run in the qualifier. Ends up putting there, and just like we expected, the pace will be set by Chris Carroll. Jake Nail in the second spot, and Chase McCola sits third early. First four, five cars on the bottom of the racetrack. RTJ letting it hang out to dry on the outside, trying to make some hay as we got the caution flag out for Quentin Benson. Turned around in turn three, the first K1 caution of the stock non wing feature. So Benson will get squared around and back at the field. Still really early to learn anything, although it's good to see that some of the drivers are already willing to venture up trackside. See if RTJ jumps back out of line here. I think that's a good move for a corner or two, but still a little bit early on to be searching. Either way, you want to be the first to find it when it's there, right? Sure do. You don't want to be too early, though. Back under the green flag they go. Everybody stacks up on the bottom side of the racetrack as your top three and four pull away. Even Stevens, they go through three and four. Chris Carroll continues to take the point. A couple of drivers willing to pull out a line, at least on the exit through three and four. Top three gonna stay right in place until somebody tells them they don't have to anymore. As Carroll trying to stretch over nail here in the early going. RTJ just had huge contact with Jace Park for the fourth position. Everyone stays green, but Ricky Thornton lost a lot of spots. Kale Drake, KJ Snow a little bit farther back. Now starting to work the top side of the racetrack. Haven't seen them make big time movements forward, but it's starting to get widened out, although Drake now moves back to the inside. As you look back up to the front of your field, caution flag waves, one turned around. Looks like the 22 of H of Hank Soars. Being the stock non-wing, no cockpit adjustable shocks or anything like that, you may just be trying to be patient. If you don't feel very good and you're running 10th, you have nothing to lose, be the first guy to try the top, you know? Ride it out, see what happens, right? Maybe the car gets a little bit better as you burn a minimal amount of fuel load. Not gonna build, burn a ton here, but at the same time. We are gonna go through some track change though, that's for sure, and RTJ is the first guy to peek out of line. He passed two cars in one corner. And he's looking for more. That's a big move by Ricky Thornton Jr. He's on the outside of Park right now, ascending his way back and up the field. And he's got a big all run coming on Spicola. The difference in RTJ and everyone that's tried before him is he's all the way up there. He's going to have a third at the line coming after Jake Nail. And he may have Jake Nail here off the top side of turn number two. And all of a sudden, the rest of the field took notice. RTJ is open to lane. And you've got Spicola, you've got Jace Park. And the rest of the field behind him trickling the top side. Let's Here's the good news for Ricky Thornton is Chris Carroll's probably not coming off the bottom. Not unless he has a clear and like blunt sign that he just needs to go and he must be screen watching because that was the move. Battle for the lead. Thornton Jr. takes the spot. Big time back to the bottom goes Carroll. He'll come up and try to steal the momentum away. But a new race leader, 10 laps into this, it is Ricky Thornton Jr. Yeah, this is going to be fun to watch. Side by side, they've gone the last couple of laps. Carroll now back to the bottom. Thornton Jr. going to have the momentum, although Carroll, really good set of corners in three and four. Almost got it back, but not quite. Now down low once again. Carroll rolling the bottom a little smoother. Puts the left front up on the apron. That's going to hurt him. Ricky Thornton Jr. furthers the lead into turn one. Carroll's going to follow him now on the top side. Caution flag is out on the speedway. One slowing in turn three. And Brody Brown, I believe. Yeah, Brody Brown in the 15. Slowed at the top side of turn three. And crazy racing, guys. The last completed lap, we had three hundredths of a second split between Ricky Thornton and Chris Carroll. That could have gone either way for who's the leader of this race right now. Ricky was coming, and the high side was going to have to be gotten to even sooner. And they may have been. He may just not have seen it. 19 to go. Ricky Thornton Jr. brings us back to green. Gets down to prevent the slide job from Carroll. Down the back straight away, opening her up a little bit, and Carroll's gonna follow him around the top of three Whoa, and four. Oh, big bike by Jace Park. How did he save that? Massive moment. Wow. Lost only a couple spots. Austin Wood gonna drive around. That was a pucker factor of times 10. 
Meanwhile, nail to the outside. Frank Flood working the bottom. Flood up to fourth. He's looking for third from ninth. Flood having himself a run here. Digging down low while the rest of the field seems to be transitioning up high. Flood's going to zig when they're going to zag. Paying off for him as he is charging up this pack. Flood down low at the line. Not quite. Yep, give him third over Jake Nail. Yeah, Flood's car hooked the bottom of three and four really, really well. That's going to be the difference in some of that speed around the top when you can make it work and go in the front of you on the bottom. We're just over halfway. Let's get you a lineup reset with 14 to go. Ricky Thornton Jr., Chris Carroll, Frank Flood, Jake Nail, Chase Spicola, your top five. Grant Woods, Chase Park, KJ Snow, Drake Edwards, and Zach Weigel, your top 10. Guys, our cushions made it back up to where it started earlier today, and this thing's getting gnarly for these guys. I've seen RTJ bouncing a few times. I've seen Chris Carroll bouncing a few times. We're in for a treat for these final 12 laps. We might see a hit of traffic, too, before this thing is done. As Thornton Jr. sees the back of the pack, they're within a straightaway of him. And Chris Carroll has kept him within striking distance. He's in fact, bringing him in just a little oh, bit. Oh, big bite yeah. over the cushion. Chris Carroll, as the caution flag waves at the same time, that saves Carroll. Wow. And Torgerson comes to a stop Unreal. on the top side of three. Wow. This hey, look, you said he was reeling him, and he almost junked her. This cushion has bit, on both ends, has bit yeah. several drivers. They're getting thrown around. And then look at it, guys. I mean, it's it's a stinking foot tall. Look at the spray that we're in. I mean, I'm sure a little bit of that's coming through on the audio of how much we're getting machine gunned. And this never happens during the shootout. Yeah. These boys better watch out because Ricky Thornton's going to come in and show them how to run a cushion in a freaking micro. Who could tame Tulsa? Stock non-wing, Ricky Thornton Jr., Chris Carroll, Frank Flood, Jake Nail, and the rest of the field back underway with 12 to go. Carroll's tied on him, getting into one. And that's a big old run from Frank Flood coming after him in the third spot. Carroll hits the cushion, gets a little upset. Flood right there, but Carroll on the attack for the lead. That's a heck of a set of corners in three and four for Flood as Carroll bounces off the cushion. Drag race down into three. Here comes Frank Flood. Flood the second now. Here comes Carroll back underneath. Full send. Oh, oh, oh. Thornton Jr. blows up, it looks like. Just a little slow, oh, and yeah, now he's off. So Thornton Jr., it, your leader, with 10 to go, is off. That gives it back to Chris Carroll. What that did is really slow down your second and third place runner of Frank Flood and Chase Bacole out of nowhere. Caution There's the yellow. Out on the speedway. Oh, yellow is my out. Goodness, it was Brandon Boggs in the top <laughs> side of one and two is what brought out the yellow and oh, my RTJ. Goodness. Ah, the heartbreak, I can't imagine. Saw a potential golden driller starting to appear out the front visor. <laughs> Turn two, give him a round of applause. Yeah. As they should. Oh. You can see the oil on the left rear tire. Here it, it is. is. We all watched it going into one, and we're looking at Flood, who had just started moving on in on him. Up in smoke they go. Spicola and Flood make contact through there. Yeah. Like Clinton said, that's what delayed those two. Well, we got a whole new ball game here, guys, because <laughs> Chris Carroll's got open track, and the bottom is a is a viable option for, without a doubt. But I think Frank Flood's so good either line, he may be in trouble. I'm just excited to see how it plays, right? Yep. Two incredibly talented guys who have earned their accolades here in this arena going after it much less we could still see a surprise yeah we got a long heat race left basically and jace park has made a huge rebound from after biking deep in the field to be back up to four so we're gonna have nine laps of craziness right here nine to go for chris carroll as flood now jumps to the top side on this restart opening the lane for spatola on the inside has to get down to block Spicola. Coming through turn number three. Flood holds on to the second spot. And now after Carroll, they're even through the apex of one and two. Carroll with the advantage into turn three and four. K1 caution out on the speedway for KJ Snow. So another blown engine. Goodness gracious. Oh, look at the disappointment in KJ. 
He's he, got three more chances, but man. He was up to seventh from his 12th place starting spot. Yeah. Guys, how about Chase Picola? Not out of it by no. any means. I mean, Frank Flood had to make a move just to keep Chase behind him. It just keeps getting better. I and just... we've got eight laps left. Back to green. Flood had to clear into that corner late and Spicola overtakes him for second. Down on the bottom, let's see what kind of turn Franken may coming off, but Spicola right there, looking to be the spoiler here in the Carroll Flood party. The front stretch was going crazy for Frank Flood that time by slide job for the lead, Frank Flood. He's got it, coming to six laps to go. Carroll tries to get him underneath and Flood protects the bottom. Oh, Flood missed the bottom, Frank. Uh, Carroll tried to get up underneath. Here comes Spicola. Frank Spicola. Flood. Carroll now starting to get the top wound up a little bit. Can Chris Carroll make the comeback riding the rim? He's right there, guys. He's on him. Frank Flood gets tight. Carroll turns down the hill. Spicola right there, four laps to go. Back to the bottom go the top three. Down the back straightaway, behind about four car lengths. Chase, Chase Park is ripping the lip as well to catch up to these three. Three to go at the line for Frank Flood. Frank found a little bit of rhythm here finally. Got up and around the top. Carroll is searching. He's trying high. He's trying low. Hoping for that one thing that'll do the trick. Two to go. And Frank Flood looking to redeem himself as Carroll goes to the bottom. Carroll just trying to find any sort of line that he can run to make up ground on Frank Flood. And he's got some speed right there and a big hop down the hill. White flag, Frank Flood. Frank Flood, the legend continues in this building as Carroll jumps the cushion and that may be it. Final time through turns three and four. He's won two, now three. Stock non-wing features, Frank Flood wins the shootout. In stock non-wing over Chase Spicola, who picked up second from Chris Carroll. Jason Persley, Chase Park, your top five. He's now a five-time shootout winner. Welcome back to Victory Lane, Frank Flood. And that is one happy driver from Tulsa, Oklahoma. You knew the talent didn't fade. You knew the desire hadn't gone away. Right place, right time, right driver. Frank Flood wins an outstanding stock non-wing division A main event. It's donut time in the corner. Took the opportunity to work with Hyper this year. A lot of people were excited to see the potential that that partnership had. And you're seeing the fruits of that labor here tonight. Man, what a race from Frank coming from ninth. Yeah. Again, we <laughs> rarely see a stock non-wing main event won from anywhere but row one or row yeah. two, much less having four lead changes and the guy who gets it in the end coming from ninth. Yeah, we had comers and goers the entire time. Jason Persley ended up fourth. Wow. Chase Piccolo, race of his life for second. Yeah. Kudos to that kid. We'll get a chance to talk to him up at the top of the ramp at some point in time. Flood, Spicola, Carroll, Persley, Park, Weigel, Nail, Garrett Benson, Drake Edwards, Brant Woods, Connor Gross, Jackson Bishop, Cale Drake, Austin Wood, Neil Allison, Brandon Boggs, Cody Barnes, Anton Hernandez, Hank Soros, KJ Snow, Brody Brown, RTJ, Ashton Torgerson, and Quinton Benson as Frank Flood hoists the driller. We will go trackside with your winner's interview. And then we give him about an 8.5 on the landing. A big hug with his wife, Ashley. It's a beautiful day in the life of Frank Flood. How about that from the ninth starting spot? The gloves are going to come off. Once that helmet comes off, he'll be able to hear you folks. Once again, Frank Flood, your winner. Yeah. Buddy, this is a night you're gonna remember for a long time. And I know 
If there are some, what, 8,000, 5,000 people, maybe 10,000 people in this building, you can be one in addition to say that you wish Ricky Thornton Jr. hadn't grenaded a motor. Oh, definitely. I wanted to race it out coming out of four if we could have had it our way. But, you know, like I've said, I got to thank God for putting every one of these people standing right here in my life to be standing on this stage. All these fans for coming out, for supporting this race so we can have it every year here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I cannot believe we just freaking won. Dude, you know, it's always funny when I call you the GOAT, you receive it so with so much humble, but uh, to stand here and think that this uh, is yet another on not as many as you think it would be, this is so very special to you. I believe, what is this, your fourth? It's fifth. My, it's my fifth, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. I gotta, thank, I gotta thank my wife for sticking with me through all the bull crap I've put her through. I gotta thank my dad, Matt, Mike, Hyper, Jim. I gotta thank Jimmy. It's, it's everybody from me. Metric Cycles for sticking with me through all the trouble we've had. Engler Machine, Outlaw Wings, Micron Tom, PE3, Dysinger Racing Products. It takes every one of these people. Pure Max Oil, Smith Titanium, Smith Brakes. I know I'm forgetting a ton of people, but it's, it's just so surreal to be standing on this stage, wishing I could get here again. And here we're standing here in front of all these people. Well, two phases. He started ninth, he had a nice trip forward. Uh, no sooner than you caught Ricky, that's when the motor let loose. Then on the restart, you had a beautiful tussle with an old uh, compadre. You and Chris Carroll put on a hell of a show late. Yeah, definitely. Chris is always one strong competitor. I knew it was going to be tough. We just had to play cat and mouse enough to get him to go one direction so I could go the other. I still got Dean Franklin sitting up in the stands over there giving me a little signal here and there. So, you know, it's the whole cruise together, and I can't be happier just because Everybody has just come in full circle into this deal, and it's just, it's freaking amazing. That's all I can say. You got more work to do tonight? Definitely. I, I want to get that A-class win so bad, but you know what? I'm not going to let anything spoil this one right here. Well, we know once you strap into that A-class car, you're going to be feeding on adrenaline, buddy. There are so many people in this building so happy for you right now, buddy. Definitely, and, you know, starting f and performance with Hyper Chassis this year has been Absolutely insane. I, I don't know what to say. It's, you know, without the help of Mark from Milestone kind of prodding us all the time, pushing us to do something like this on our own, we wouldn't be standing here, and I got to thank them too. An extra $250, making it $2,750. Your old buddy Lacey Wiegers, good luck kiss worked out for you tonight. By God, he's going to owe me another one now. Ladies and gentlemen, you're stuck now, Wig Champion, Pray Oklahoma's Frank Fight. Chris Carroll leads laps one through 10. Ricky Thornton Jr. leads 11 through 20. Chris Carroll 21 through 23. And Frank Flood leads laps 24 through 30 to take home the Golden Driller in the stock non-wing division. As part of his winner's package tonight, every winner of Golden Driller gonna receive a bottle of Inferno armor, courtesy of Kevin Thomas Jr. and the crew. We are ready to talk to third and second place. Let's uh, kick things up top with our third place interview. Thank you, Caleb. Yep, I got Chris Carroll here. Chris, it doesn't feel like a third place finish. You were close, so close, man. You led more laps than anybody in the race. Uh, you rolled the bottom a lot. You ran the top a lot, which the guys in the booth were really surprised by. I know it's tough up front. What, were, what was just going through your mind through that race? Uh, yeah, you know, I could hear him coming. I got up to the top there and uh, battled there for first and second pretty much the whole race. Uh, the car was good. Uh, Frank was just a little bit better. Uh, we missed the top there going into one and two and kind of put us into third. But, you know, overall, there's 400 and something other people that would love to finish third. Uh, we got a couple more features. We'll regroup and uh, go see what we can get done there. Tell me, right, so you, you're you typically a, a guy that's going to run the bottom. They, we thought 30 laps, Chris Carroll around the bottom, and you might be able to just write the check. But you, it was not like that. You were running the top, ripping the lip. I mean, you looked like you belonged up there. Yeah, I, I mean, we run uh, Port City back home. We run the top a lot there. Uh, you know, it's real technical up there. Uh, that Payne Hard Bar Sawyer, it doesn't like some of those big holes, but uh, my guys had me pretty much set up. I could run pretty much wherever I needed to. Uh, like I said, we just got a beat on that one and regroup and see what we got later. Good job, Chris. Thank you.
There you go, guys. Chris Carroll, a little disappointed, but uh, he'll take it. This guy, not disappointed at all. Chase McCola, runner-up finish. Does this feel like a win? I mean, you you guys are really happy over here. I mean, first off, man, I want to say thanks to God for, you know, everything. And my dad, my mom, uh, you know, so much goes into it. And um, David Page, Page Construction, man, he was here all week, him and Lucas, helping out. Maverick, man, yeah, that was amazing. Um, thanks to Cornered Motorsports, A1 Electric, um, Money Inc. Motorsports, Next Level Science and Graphics, and Hyper Racing, Ghoul Injections. Um, man, yeah, that's, it's a win, dude. I mean, coming in, I, you know, the goal is always, every time you come to a race, you want to win it, but I mean, I was just happy to make the main, and especially if you start an outside pole, that was so cool. I mean, just taking it in, this is such a cool event, man. This was so cool just to be, just to experience this and to run second. I mean, oh, I'm so happy. I... <laughs> Congratulations, man. Thank, thank you. Thank you. There you go, guys. We won't make him talk anymore. He's overcome with emotion an outstanding run for the youngster. We're going to send it back down to victory lane with Connor Wade, who's got our winner. Frank Flood gets a golden driller. Frankie had four of these before. The last couple of years haven't been the shiniest for you. You've bounced around a lot. Were you worried you'd never make it back? It's always a thought you have whenever you start getting a little older and you start having a family and start doing business things. It's, well, is this a second thought? Are we preparing enough? Should we even come? But you know what? It, it's finally the right people are in the right pl place again. And even though I'm with Hyper Chassis, I still have to thank Jim and Sherry at Factor One, Jason and Christy. They're always supporting me. Mike at Sawyer Chassis is always supporting me. And, you know, it's, it's huge to know that some of the top tier manufacturers still root for me, still push for me, and just shows a testimony to all of us how much of a family we actually are. You took the lead on a slide job when Carroll went to the top. Were you surprised he left the bottom open, allowing you to make that move? I, no, because I saw Chad telling him he had to move to the top, and I just had to kind of shoot and hope for the best. Like I say, in this building, all day long, I'd rather be lucky than good. Your first one with your son, Luke. How much does that mean? And I hear, I was told a secret that you might want to share. Yeah, definitely. It's huge to know that Luke was in the building with me. He was standing there smiling, wanting to know what dad was doing. But it's extra special because we've actually haven't announced it really yet. But we, uh, Ashley is pregnant again, and we're expecting Luke to have a little sibling. Congratulations, Frank. Thank you. Frank Flood is a five-time Tulsa shootout champion and a soon-to-be two-time dad.